Now, there's a, there is a big problem with current technical analysis, and that is that 95% of day traders fail. Now, this is unacceptable uh, in, in, in any other field of endeavor. If you, if you take um, architecture or medicine, um, and it had a 95% failure rate at some time in, at some time in the past, um, what happens is, uh, is that a, a scientific analysis is done, and the, the component that's ineffective is, is determined um, via rigorous scientific analysis and is removed. And the components that, are, that, are, that work are expanded upon. But for some reason, this doesn't take place with uh, technical analysis. And this 95% failure rate just never seems to improve. And what happens is that, is that each generation of day, of day trader fails to learn from the previous generation. And what they do is they accept current dogma without any mathematical verification. And if you look at, uh, at a Nexus-Lexus world search for, for any type of um, rigorous analysis of an oscillator or MACD or Fibonacci, to determine if any of these indicators or systems actually increase the precision of your trading, you'll find that there's absolutely nothing. So what we do is we, ex we accept current day uh, indicators and current day trading analysis as being effective even though we've never been shown any proof that they are, uh, the, any kind of scientific analysis, and I think herein lies the problem. Um, what we need to do is to determine what works and to, and to determine what doesn't work, and that's something that just doesn't take place, and that's why that 95% failure rate, <coughs> excuse me, never seems to improve. Now, <coughs> what we've done is we've determined that there are certain independent variables that bring forces to bear on price on any given financial market that absolutely are predictive of the future direction of price. One is you must be able to, to um, analyze the, the time, you must be able to analyze trends on a multi-time frame basis. And you must be able to analyze, we call them correlative markets, but they're an, a way to measure the direction of money flow on a multi-time frame direction, on a, on a multi-time frame basis. And you must be able to analyze order flow on a multi-time frame basis. Order flow tells you on the dome who is in control of the market, the bulls or the bears. And you must be able to analyze momentum on a multi-time frame basis. And you must look at volume via the use of market profile. Now, dependent variables are, are indicators or systems that are moved by the independent variables. And if you, if you use a dependent variable to help you with your trading, it's only, to, it's only going to serve to degrade the, the precision of your, of your, of your trading. I mean, oscillators only, only make your trading worse. They don't predict the future direction of price. They only tell you where price has been. The same thing with the MACD, the same thing with Fibonacci. The Fibonacci analysis we've looked at on two years of market replay data, it just does not work. Now, the first indicator I want to go over is momentum and order flow. What we have is we have an indicator called the three line, which we reduce to a two line. Because one of the lines, which is the stochastic, we've analyzed and found that it does not work. Now this is a this analyzes momentum on the two higher time frames from the one that you're trading. If you're trading a three minute, it looks at the nine minute and the twenty seven minute. If you're trading a five minute, it looks at the fifteen minute and the forty five minute. If you're trading a five range, it looks at your two higher fibs, the eight and the 13 range. So it's doing an analysis of momentum and order flow on the two higher time frames than your trading chart. Now, when your two higher time frames, up, now there's a lot of ways to measure momentum. Um, and the oscillator is a momentum-based indicator. Um, MACD is a momentum-based indicator, but we use Heiken Ashi momentum. So when momentum is down on both higher time frames, 
this indicator is red. When order flow shows an overabundance of sellers on your two higher time frames, this indicator is red. The indicator is green when your two higher time frames show momentum to the upside or order flow to the upside. Now, what you look for is an alignment of these two um, parameters because they're both independent variables. They, bro they, they both create a directional bias with price. And when they align in the appropriate direction, the bottom being order flow and the top being momentum on the two higher time frames, price is going to always move to the upside. It's very difficult for price to move against a multi-time frame assessment of momentum and the multi-time frame assessment of order flow. So you can, and what it does is it gives you a strong directional bias tells you which direction to take the trade. As soon as you break resistance here, you have a long trade only. Traders in this, these orange counter, counter trend candles do, do, do nothing but get run over. And what they're doing is they're trading oscillator divergence, MACD divergence, all the signals that, that uh, the whole host of traders are using um, that leads them to that 95% failure rate. Here's another trade. Now, the instrument that we're looking at and the time frame that we're looking at is irrelevant. All that matters here is the alignment of order flow and momentum on a multi-time frame basis and the fact that price is almost always going to rise into this analysis. Now, I don't recommend counter-trend trading, but if you, if you want to do it, you have to wait till order flow and momentum turn. Now, here's another alignment of order flow and momentum to the downside. Price is going to fall. And remember, this indicator is not analyzing any data from your trading chart. It's only analyzing data from your two higher time frames. Now, since these are equal, um, these are equal in power in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of being independent variables, what happens when they don't align? The top line is momentum, the bottom line is order flow. When they don't align, price chops. It's another way of defining a chop market. And when they don't align, that's the time to stay out of the market. Here's a period here where they don't align. Order flow is giving you a short signal. Momentum is giving you a long signal. And you can see what happens to price. It just chops. Finally, you get an alignment. It breaks to the upside, and price is going to move up. Now, there's the multi-time frame analysis of trend. And this may be the most important indicator. Um, without this type of alignment, any trade that you make is going to have significant risk. With everything aligned up with this indicator, risk is markedly reduced. Now, I think most traders agree that you have to, tra you have to look or you have to do a multi-time frame analysis of trend. Uh, if you just trade your trading chart and your trading chart is moving in one direction and your two higher time frames are moving in another, you're actually trading against the direction of the longer term trend. And that's really going, going to give you problems. Excuse me one sec. So what we've done is created an indicator that looks at the trend on the two higher time frames. Now the trend is defined as the, the, with the 50 period moving average and the 15 period moving average on your two higher time frames. Now since this is a, this is a range, it's going to be looking at the 8 range and the 13 range. Again, if it was a three minute, it would be looking at the nine minute and the 27 minute. So on the eight and the 13 range, what you have is the 50 sloping to the downside, it's red. The 15 has crossed the 50 to the downside and it's heading down. And price is below both the 15 and the 15. 
So all support is broken. Price is below the 50 and the 15. 15's cross the 50, and price just, just has really a free ride down. Now, you can do this analysis yourself on the two higher time frames, but it's much tougher. The indicator does it for you. And this is pink because the two higher time frames have that setup. 50s down, 15s heading down, prices below both, 15s cross the 50 to the downside. Now, what direction is price likely to move on your trading chart? It's almost always going to move to the downside. So you can only trade short. And when you get this multi-time frame alignment in price, this is one of the strongest signals you can get. This is the best time to trade. Now, if you try to counter trend trade it with these green candles, you're just going to get stopped out. That's what a lot of traders do. They don't realize or look for that multi-time frame alignment. Uh, and they trade oscillator divergence again, MACD divergence. They look for bottoms and tops, which can never be called. Bottoms and tops are, are created by the institutional players, um, not by any analysis. All you can do is a multi-time frame trend is created by institutional players. You don't get these unless there's institutional money coming into the market. So the only thing we can take with this pink background bias is a short trade. That's another way of analyzing the direction to trade. You have order flow, you have momentum, and this is a very powerful, a very powerful signal. You have the multi-time frame analysis of trend. Now here's the same thing to the upside. The 50 is sloping up. The, the 15 is sloping up. The 15 is crossed the 50 to the upside and price is above both the 50 and the 15. And the size of the move is really irrelevant. This is on the E-mini S&P. It doesn't matter what it's on. And like I said, it works on stocks, futures, or Forex. It's irrelevant here. It's 14 and a quarter points here, and it's 11 and three quarters points here. Again, it doesn't make any difference the size of the move. All it's doing is telling you the direction that you must trade in order to get a successful trade, or to put it another way, it's a way of taking a low-risk, high-reward trade. Without this alignment, you cannot get one. Now, you can see in the middle here, where there is no multi-time frame alignment, that price just tends to chop. And this is when you don't want to trade the market. The one thing about day trading or swing trading is you don't want to accrue risk. You want to avoid risk at all costs, and you have an increased risk anytime you trade without a multi-time frame alignment. Now, correlative markets are a way, are, as, are as direct, the order flow also is a way of tracking money flow. Um, when, there's a, when there's a preponderance of sellers on the dome, obviously there's money coming out of the market. When there's a preponderance of buyers, money is moving in. But I think this tracks money flow better than all of them. And what this is, is we all know that there's a, there's a fixed amount of money in the market on any given day. And the reason that certain financial instruments go up or certain finan financial instruments go down is that there's a risk on, risk off uh, mindset with the institutional traders and when risk is off, they're going to rotate their money out of stocks and into safer financial investments. It's, it's, it's just the uh, sector rotation of money. And we track that rotation of money using these correlative markets. Now, we know that when the NASDAQ, the E-mini, the Russell and the Dow fall, Certain markets, like treasury bonds, treasury notes, certain currencies and precious metals rise. And what it's telling you is that the institutional traders are moving their money out of stocks and into these safer investments. So it's looking at the uh, flow of money from asset class to asset class by the institutional guys. And that's the big money. 
Now, here's a chart of, of uh, bonds, and you can see these, these, this is the analysis. And there's three correlative markets in each line for six correlative markets. Again, it's another directional bias. We have the multi-time frame alignment of trend. We have order flow. We have momentum. And now we're looking at money flow. And here it's telling you is that the markets that go up, when bonds go up, are going up. And when the markets that go down, when bonds go up, are going down. So these two green lines are telling you that the institutional players are rotating their money into bonds. The other indicators looked at higher time frames, and these look at other markets. So during this period of time, and, and this is a very strong signal on bonds and treasury notes, when you get these dual green, uh, we call them quant lines because each of the individual markets are quantitatively weighted within this indicator. And this is green, green. Money is flowing into bonds, and they're going to go up. Same thing here. Now, when this indicator is yellow, it shows that there's no asset class movement of money by the institutional traders, and bonds chop. You can see right here, when one of the quant lines is yellow, price chops. Unless the big players are moving money in or out of bonds, dual red or dual green signals here, you really don't want to trade bonds. So now you have four really strong ways of assessing a low-risk trade. You have the quant lines, which assess money flow. You have the multi-time frame alignment of trend. You have all on the multi-time frame assessment of order flow and momentum. When all those align, the chances of getting stopped out are exceedingly low, and you're, and you're going to get a very low risk, potential high reward trade. Here's another example. This is very similar to the example I, I showed this to you once before. Oftentimes, when the institutional traders rotate money, it creates that multi-time frame lock in trend because you can see these correlative markets or quant lines are telling you that money is flowing into the e-mini S&P and money is flowing here into e in the e-mini S&P and remember price is rising because this indicator is green this indicator is not even looking at price on the e-mini S&P so this is causing this the rise in price doesn't turn these lines green. These three green lines looking at correlative markets are telling you price is going to rise. That's a true independent predictor of the future movement of price. So I'm going to skip these just for time. These are just showing you some signals, and we'll go over these later. Now, I want to show you a market profile. Now, you have to respect market profile. It's extremely important. Um, and it's really based on very sound math. And it, it's based on the normal distribution of data. In a, and in a perfect world, any, any distribution of data randomly would create a bell-shaped curve. Um, and the, the mean price here will also be the median price and the mode price. And it will, be, it will be the price at which most volume has traded. And it creates a value area. And wrapping around that mean price is one standard deviation's worth of volume. Uh, worth of volume. Now here's our market profile, and what it creates is a value area high, a value area low, and a point of control. Now the point of control is the price at which most contracts or shares or pips or, or lots because it works on futures, forex, and stocks very powerfully. So the point of control is going to attract price because most volume is traded at 53.49 than any other price on this particular day on crude. But within the v, in between the VAH and the VAL is fair market value for this instrument, 66 and two-thirds percent 
of all volume at price creates fair market value. And traders are, want to, are going to try to keep the price of the instrument constrained within these two lines. So when price approaches the value area high, it gets pushed down. When price comes down and approaches the value area low, it gets pushed up. And it's always attracted to the point of control. Now we also have critical low volume nodes. They're the opposite of the point of control. In the point of control, most volume is crossed at price. At low volume nodes, very little volume is crossed at price. This is price where traders don't want the price of this trading instrument to be at. So what happens is you have price being rejected off the top by two independent forces. One is that traders want to keep price within fair market value between the VAL and the VAH, value area high, value area low, and they don't also want to trade it at this particular price where the low volume nodes are. So what this creates are zones of price rejection. These are dynamic and changing all the time. And one thing about our market profile that's unique is it recalculates intracandle. So if you're trading a three minute or a five minute, you don't have to wait till the candle completes or closes for you to see exactly where the value area high, low volume node, point of control are. You don't want to trade up into this because it's a, so it's a strong area of resistance. You don't want to trade down into it because it's a very strong area of support. And remember, our goal as traders is to avoid risk. Here's another example. If price comes up, it hits. It's rejected. It hits. It's rejected. And the second rejection sends price falling. And it actually breaks support. And then when it comes back to resistance, you're looking for a short trade. Now we can't see the multi-time frame alignment of trend. We can't see order flow. We can't see momentum. We can't see the correlative markets. So we really don't know, but just based on what we see on volume-based areas of support and resistance, this is, we must, this is what we must do in order to take a low-risk trade. Now here's an example of combining order flow with these zones of rejection. Once the zone is broken, support to the downside, you go short. It's the only direction you can trade. If you try to go long, like these counter-trend traders, you're going to get stopped out, stopped out, stopped out. And here, through this short period of time, when price breaks resistance of the point of control, you can trade it long. Now here, you can only go short. And you're going to wait for the break of support, the pullback into support. Now it becomes resistance and the move down. Now these are brand new, we, 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 just, we just rolled these out two weeks ago and they're amazing in helping us trade. Nobody else has this analysis. It's really unique and it's extremely powerful. And what it's based on is if you trade futures or you trade stocks, it's extremely powerful. And we call them cash metrics. Now what they do is, now the 16, this 21 has gone to 16. We've eliminated four of the indices, and we broke and we created four groups for the 16 indices. There's a Dow group, a NASDAQ group, and an S&P group, and a Russell group. And what they do is they look at market internals on the cash markets. And some of the internals that they look at, now this is on your, on your um, instrument manager. These are all of the metrics that it looks at. You can see it looks at the semiconductor index. Here it's looking at the S&P 500. And it's looking at all these individual metrics on the cash markets. And what it's doing, it's breaking them down into the ratio of up versus down volume, the ratio of the advanced decline line, the ratio of 
up-ticking versus down-ticking stocks. The ratio, again, of the advanced decline line on specific ETFs like the semi or the specific index, indexes like the semiconductor index, and the ratio of the uptick down tick to specific ETFs. So you have 16 metrics on each individual market looking inside the, the, uh, the internals of those markets to determine what's going on. Now, this is the this is the um, cash metrics for the E mini, and this can be and this is used on the futures market, since it's a direct correlation with the with the direction of futures and the direction of the cash markets, and it's used on the stocks because obviously stocks are going to move in the direction of the overall basket of stocks. There's going to be some divergence based on relative strength, but in general. You want to trade in the appropriate direction that these cash metric indicators tell you. Now, six parameters are based on tick data, and they move faster. And six of those parameters, I'm sorry, eight, and eight of the parameters are based on volume data, and they tend to move slower. Now, this allows you to trend trade with great degree of precision. You can trade gaps, you can trade market open, and you can trade reversals with a little more, with a, with a greater degree of precision. But again, I don't recommend you trade them. Now, here are the cash markets and their analysis, and, and here is Facebook. We're moving over to stocks, but this is good. I'm, I'm going to show you some examples for futures. You can see the multi-time frame alignment of trend is green. It's a perfect time to trade. And what we have, we have system software generated entries. And these are very important because this is when our auto trader takes a trade. So the auto trader and us in the, in the trading room would take a long trade here on the strategy entry. Both cash metrics, all 16, are aligned to the upside. Here's order flow and momentum aligned to the upside. Here's background bias. And what you get is an entry that gives you 40 cents of profit on 10 cents of risk. The risk to reward is amazingly high. And here's another trade. This is on Perigo. It's a generic pharmaceutical company. It's a trade right off the value area high acting as support. Again. The cash metrics are green, green. Market internals or cash internals are all aligned to the upside. Background bias is green. Order flow and momentum are green. I don't have the correlative markets here. We're not tracking the direction of money flow. But, we have, but I have everything else. And you can see we get 75 cents of profit on 10 cents of risk. Here's Tesla, same thing, just the cash metrics, all aligned to the downside. You get 65 cents. That, that is a system-generated signal. It occurs intracandle. It's an automated trade strategy, part of our automated system. We take it. The auto trader takes it. We're down for 65 cents on a risk of 15 cents. Amazing risk to reward. Here's a trade on Netflix. Cash metrics, red, red. Order flow and momentum, red, red. Background bias, is, this, is, this is the prime background color. We get a C candle engulfing off of this area of resistance. And Netflix goes down almost a dollar on 15 cents of risk. Uh, that's an incredibly good risk to reward. This is Akamai. Um, this is, and, and, you know, uh, uh, traders always ask me, can I trade um, longer-term time frames? This is an hour chart, and this is a multi-day hold, and this gives you a buck five on this trade. Risk, very tiny risk on this candle. 
Here's an eight candle entry on Garmin. Uh, they make um, smart watches and GPS devices prop and probably other things as well in the direction of the cash metrics that are green green. Market internals are all aligned to the upside. Up you go. To try to counter trend trade against these, you're going to get you're going to get hurt. Here's Nvidia, profit of a buck eight on risk of ten cents. Now here's how you trade a gap, and I just want to talk briefly about gaps. How a gap sets up pre-market provides you with absolutely no information. Now, if you ask yourself, who creates the gaps pre-market? The answer is, it's the, it's the non-professional traders. It's the commercial traders like you or I. We set up the pre-market gap because the volume is low, liquidity is low, and institutional players don't come in with big money pre-market. They, they decide what's going to happen after the market opens with that gap. Whether you can see it gapping down pre-market, and that gap down is created by the small players like us. Now, we don't want to trade pre-market or create a gap pre-market because what happens ultimately is when the market opens and the institutional traders move in, that's going to determine the direction of that gap. Pre-market analysis is useless. The only thing that works is what happens at market open is then the professional guys with the huge money come in and they're going to determine what happens to that gap. And you can see the initial gap down at market open is, causes a huge gap up. And you can get in right at this gap up if the cash metrics are green green. And you can take that gap and know that it's not going to fill it's simply going to run, and that's the way you professionally trade a gap. Oh, here's another gap right here, and this is on OptoKinetics. It's a small uh, biotech company that, I, that I've traded many times with, um, with options. As you can see, pre-market, the small traders have created a gap down. Now, you don't know whether that gap is going to fill until after the market opens, the professional guys create the dual red cash, and then the gap widens, and opto, op, optical kinetics falls. Now here's a gap up on uh, console energy. You ride this gap up. You make a buck ten on a fifteen on a sixteen dollar stock. Uh, that's a massive amount of money on a small on a small stock. Just trading in the direction of the cash metrics, which are looking inside the market. Here's a market open on Facebook. You have a pre market gap down. Is the market going to close the gap at open, or is it going to run with the gap down? The fast cash, the top line goes red first, then the bottom line, and you're going to trade that. You're going to trade to in the direction where the gap is going to widen. That's how you're going to trade this gap. You're not going to fade it. You're going to go with it. Now, this is just a trend trade on the NQ. Now, the NQ is going to almost always move in the direction of the cash NQ. This is the futures NQ. You don't want to trade against the, the, uh, the, uh, the cash internals because there's a very high correlation between cash internals and the direction of the futures market. No one has ever done this analysis before. But if the, if the cash NQ is heading down, do you really want to take the futures NQ long? And the answer to that is no. And if you see these three traders in, this lo in these long candles are simply going to get run over because the NQ is going to roll when it hits resistance. You get a system-generated entry. This would, this would also be an automated trade on our automated system. 
and you get nine points on the NQ. And here's the E-mini, same thing. When the cash E-mini is heading to the upside and 16 market internals are telling you that the, the cash ES is heading up, you want to trade the futures ES in that same direction. Again, this is called the consolidation entry. I'm going to go through these real quickly, but it's, it, but it's an automated trade as well as we take the trade on a discretionary basis and you get a, a nine and a quarter long point trade. Here's market open, no gap. But if you get everything aligned to the upside at market open, you're going to get a run. That doesn't happen that often, but when it does, you can trade it. And you can get a great trade at market open, and you can be finished for the day on your first trade. Now, I'm going to go over really quickly the, the, the system-generated signals that we look for and the automated system looks for. This is a strategy entry. It's, we never look at anything on one time frame. This is a multi-time frame analysis. It looks at price action and market structure. It's a, we call it a smart signal. It occurs in your candle, and you can see it fires for a short. It always gives us time to get into the trade because it, 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 it evolves and flashes when the candle's only partially formed. Here are two, a long trade and a short trade. Both of these would be system-generated entries on our automated system. Also, there would be trades we would take. The ABC is two candles in a row to find a trend. This is the counter-trend candle trading against the direction of the 50 and the 15, it's almost always a loser. When you counter trend, trade the trend. What happens is there's the addition of new short sellers because the institutional players are involved in, in creating the short trend, and the C candle gets pushed down by two forces, the addition of the additional short traders and all these long traders in the B candle getting stopped out. They're going to get overrun to the downside, and this, and this is going to fly. This is an entry for us, one tick below the close of the C, and it's also an automated trading system signal. Here's another C, always in the direction of the trend. Here's two more Cs, C to the upside, 50s green, 15s green, up, 50s red, 15s red, down, 36.35. All of them, trades we take and trades the automated system takes. And the consolidation signal is extremely powerful, also occurs intracandle. We take it and the automated system takes it. Now, most systems wait for a break of consolidation and they get in the trade a, a whole candle late. We know that consolidation almost always breaks out into, into the direction of the trend. It only doesn't when the market's significantly overbought or significantly oversold. Now, when is a period of consolidation likely to break? And what happens is the higher term time frames call it. This is a multi-time frame analysis, and it tells you when consolidation is pretty much always going to break. So you're in a candle early. And Consolidation is a period of low volatility where the power of the bears and the power of the bulls is equal. Here's an up candle, here's a doji, here's a down candle, here's an up candle, here's a down candle, here's an up candle. The system calls for a break of consolidation here. You would get in here first. It doesn't stop you out. You get another signal and you're in. Either way, the system generated signal, the first one, the auto trader would take and we would take as well, we'd take a little heat on the trade, but then we'd go straight up. Here's another trade, break of consolidation. These, this blue and this red candle are all consolidation signals. Consolidation signals, short and long. Now here's on win. Consolidation signal short, 
uh, cash metrics here, order flow and momentum, background bias, nice win. Long, I think I, I, I think I showed this. Here are two short trades on crude. Here's the uh, quant showing the direction of money flow. Um, here's order flow and momentum, background bias for 19 ticks and 44 ticks. Here's our order flow indicator, pull back to support of the point of control and up for 3.75. There's the trade down. You see we're always trading with that dark background bias, the multi-time frame alignment of trend, we're looking for pullback to resistance, and a move back into the downtrend in the direction of money flow. 4.75 on the E-mini. Pullback to support, up on the direction of money flow. This is a very strong up color in terms of background bias. It's not quite as strong as this dark green, but this tells you there is a multi-time frame alignment of trend to the upside. Here's a transition zone or automated trade to the downside. 34 ticks, 360 in profit. This is only how we have the money flow. or It's the same as the, we call it the quant line. The direction of money flow, multi-time frame alignment, uh, 34 ticks, 360. Here's, here's on um, the Forex, 43 pips, 655. That's a strategy entry. It's an automated signal. You're in, the automated system is in, down you go. Money flow, order flow, momentum. Background bias is pink. Let me see where we are with time. Okay, I'm, this is a 52 pip trade. Money flow, order flow, and momentum, all in the direction of the trend. So let me go over to the, our offer. We, we've got so many of these. Now, I have two quick testimonials. Jersey Tony is a top step trader, so his, his performance is published. And he's one of the best top, top step traders and uses our system, and he really talks about us very, very nicely. And D. Moore is one of our longest traders, and he's, he's one of the best top step traders out there. We have a huge number of top step traders. When he first got funded, he, took, he went 21 straight days without a loss. And his first check was $3,000. And this is Trader D. He won the 2016 Top Step Trader Games. He made $54,047, more than any other trader in the $50,000 combine. He was number one in 2016 in this combine for making money. So quickly, we look at the multi-time frame assessment of price or trend. We look at the correlative markets, and, the, and, this is, and this is really a direction of money flow, order flow, momentum, market profile, the cash metrics, our entry signals, our strategy, momentum, and see candle, and we have our own trade execution platform as well, which helps us get into those trades on the touch of a button. So let me show you the offer. Um, the full indicator suite, and it comes complete with our, with our own trade execution platform on a permanent license. Get three months in the live trading room with me. You get, it's not 12 weeks, it's 10 weeks of trading school, where we're going to teach you exactly how to trade from the ground up. You're going to unlearn a lot of things that you've been taught. You get access to our video tutorial library and we'll make you, and we'll make you chart template. And the first five orders will also get our automated system. So you can trade this on your, on our, on your own in the live trading room and also let the automated system accrue money for you on its own. It trades the NASDAQ, the E-mini, gold, crude, the euro currency, treasury bonds, and treasury notes. That's almost $10,000 in value. But for the webinar, we're offering it for $2,750 as a one-time payment or two payments of $1,425, 30 days apart. And the first five get the automated and the non-automated system together. And this offer expires Sunday evening. Now, here we are with rightlinetrading.com. 
emails info at rightlinetrading.com. Now our telephone number just changed because we just we just changed internet service providers. We're at 786 713 5276. Now I've just about completed my time. So I'm going to see if there are any questions. If you have any other questions, you know, aside from anything you want to ask in the room, you're always welcome to give us a call or send us an email. Um, so let me just take a quick look here. Hold on. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any questions. But if you, if you, if okay, if you can think of any, if you can think of any questions um, at any time, just call me or let me know, um, or send us an email. Okay, sure. Sure. The offer is well, you get our own, you get our trade execution platform. It allows you to take the same trades that I do on the touch of a button. You don't have to if you use Ninja Trader and we're we're licensed for Ninja Trader and Sierra charts. You can trade just by pressing a button and not trading off their dome. Uh, and it really does give you trades with less slippage, slippage and a much much amount a much greater precision. You get three months in the live trading room. You go, you go to trading school for 10, it's 10 sessions, and some of them last two and a half hours, where I teach you from the ground up exactly how to trade. You get access to our video tutorial library, and we help you with chart templates, because if you want to trade different markets, because all of the indicators uh, do a multi-time frame assessment, some of the inputs are hard to figure out at first because you have to recalibrate them all for those multi-time frame, the multi-time frame assessment. So we, I'll, I create a bunch of them for you and teach you how to make them. In addition to that, if you're one of the first five, you also get the automated system that takes the strategy entry, the consolidation entry, and the C-candle entry on the NASDAQ, the E-mini, the gold, crude oil, euro currency, T-bonds, and treasury notes. Um, this, is, this is up about 250% year to date. It only trades the most conservative entries. Every single independent variable that we require, order flow, momentum, quant lines, which is an assessment of cash flow, um, the cash metrics, background bias, everything has to be perfect. And then you have to get a system generated signal, either um, strategy, uh, consolidation, or see candle for the automated system to take a trade. It trades the most lowest risk, potentially highest reward trades there are. And the offer is for, it's $27.50 in one payment or two payments of $14.25, 30 days apart. And you have the automated and the non-automated system. Okay, well listen everyone, thank you so much Kathy and, and Lee. Um, Lee's a great guy. I mean, he, he, he has a great system, and he is really one of the most transparent, honest people in a tough business that you'll ever meet. I mean, no one, no one ever, I, 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 this guy will never tell you anything that isn't, that isn't the gospel. So listen, everyone, have a really great morning. Um, and uh, uh, listen, I look forward to seeing, you, to seeing you in the trading room. We make money almost every day just trading conservatively, conservatively with the system. So listen, have a great, great morning, and I hopefully look forward to, to seeing you aboard. Thank you, thank you, Kathy, so much, and um, we'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye.